Hello, and welcome to Historic Hole. My name is David, and as always, I am joined by Jason and Michael. Hello. Hi. And we here at Historic Hole, we take views, sometimes funny, sometimes informative, usually not, at random events through history. It could be assassinations, random things, but today we're going to something called World War II. You heard of it, guys? Yeah. Sequel. <laughs> and a specific moment... Sequel was better than the original. A definitely superior sequel here. Yeah, this is yeah. definitely the way better. This is the Dark Knight of World Wars. <laughs> Let me <Yeah>. tell you. <laughs> and uh, so the Empire Strikes Back. Of and World so we're going to talk about a climax or one of the early ones of the Dark Knight when he saves Rachel. No wait, he almost quite it. literally <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of is <laughs> the Japanese Empire. Spoiler alert: the Battle of Midway. It happened, and we're talking about it. <laughs> oh Lord! So. The Battle of Midway was a decisive naval battle in the Pacific Theater, which Jason apparently is not as interested in as the European theater, but that's either, neither here nor there. It's hither too. It, hither just seemed, too. it always <laughs> just seemed boring to me. <laughs> I don't know why. There was so much more happening on the Western Front. Well, I, I don't school you. think so. I don't know. There was still a lot of war going on. Well, you also had two theaters in, in Europe with the Western Front and all, well, anyway, the, Pacific. all the stuff happening in Africa. Or in the Pacific. Yeah, the Africa incursions, too. Yeah, there was a lot of theaters. It was diverse. It was a full multiplex. It was a world war. <laughs> it truly was a war of the world. What? Like the aliens, they invaded. Tom so this Cruise. particular battle of Midway took place between the 4th and 7th of June, 1942. Not necessarily a good year. <laughs> <laughs> It was exactly six months after uh, Japan's attack. On, and, uh, on Pearl December Harbor? December 7th. Okay. On Pearl Harbor. Okay, just wanted to make yes, sure. Yes, yes, no. Yeah, that was the attack. <laughs> Japan's <laughs> we, general attack. We simply <laughs> refer to it as the attack here in America. Attack. <laughs> Japan's attack. And it was one month after the Battle of the Coral Sea. So, for about six months, the United States was getting their ass kicked. <laughs> it wasn't going well. Japan was just blowing up all of our stuff. And we're like, well, this stinks. Yeah. So, no bueno. That's true. It is. <laughs> we so, were getting our asses wasn't looking good. handed to us. It's the Empire Strikes Back. It's not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> we just got our off. hand cut off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They found us, which, you know, a lot they of They blew up the shield generator. They did. <laughs> Run. It was in Pearl Harbor. <laughs> a bad place to put it. Intensify the full firepower. <laughs> yeah, of the battleships, which there was many in this battle. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so sunk. the Battle of Coral Sea happened. That one didn't work out too well either. We had a lot of ships sunk. So the United States Navy under Admirals Chester W. Nimitz. Nimitz. Guy, Nimitz. Frank J. Fletcher and Raymond Spruance. Fletch. They defeated Spruance. an attacking fleet of Imperial Japanese Navy under the Admirals Yamamoto, Nagumo, and Kandu Oy. near Midway Atoll. <laughs> Inflicting devastating damage on the Japanese fleet that proved irreparable. Irreparable? Irreparable. <laughs> and irreparable. We blew up a lot of it their was stuff. <laughs> not able to be repaired. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you know, my friend, military historian, 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 <laughs> John Keegan called it the most stunning and decisive blow in the history of naval warfare. Well, my other friend, naval historian, Craig Simmons, called it one of the most consequential naval engagements in world history, ranking alongside Salamis. The Greeks. Salamis? Salamis. Salamis. I might not be able to pronounce some of these. Trafalgar. It's okay. Now you know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to the club. Oh, yeah. how the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> I am now a DJ. <laughs> uh, Trafalgar. Napoleon Wars, of course. And the Tsushima Strait, which also involved Japan and Russia. Because they were fighting before then. The Russo-Japanese War. Indeed. Russo. It's both tactically decisive and strategically influential. Ooh. So, the U.S. Navy's decisive victory in the air-sea battle and successful defense of the major base located at Midway Island dashed Japan's hopes of neutralizing the United States as a naval power. And we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And effectively, turned the tide of World War II, the sequel in the Pacific. The most... Boring subplot of World War II, the movie, according to Jason. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it took him years to come out with the Band of Brothers for the Pacific Theater. So there's that. <laughs> it was like a few more years. <laughs> it wasn't that long. And they did it. <laughs> yeah, they still did it. I don't see the act. It was a money, it was a it was a money grab. I don't it see was an a HBO. lot more depressing than the. Well, yeah, because the Japanese were quite terrible people. <laughs> 
oh. during during war. Well, they were just so fanatical. Hold on, is now. what it was. Yes. They indeed were. And we will get into some of their um, battle tactics. We'll kind of go into that. Mm. But Japan's efforts to establish clear naval and air superiority in the Western Pacific first hit a snag, just a little snag, at the Battle of the Coral Sea. What caught mentioned. my sweater? <laughs> when the U.S. fleet turned back a Japanese invasion force headed for Papua New Guinea. Despite the setback, Admiral Yamamoto was convinced his forces enjoyed a new... Mer- oh, God. You can cut that out. <laughs> a numerical superiority Numer- <laughs> advantage over the Americans. Which was quite true. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they oh, yeah. had more stuff. How much more? Or give me some numbers. Oh, I could give you some numbers. But here. he didn't. Go Look at this. No, no, no. absolutely. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, I have numbers. So if for you it. really, if you really want to see exactly what the the who versus who was, the United States Navy had three fleet carriers, seven heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, fifteen destroyers, two hundred thirty three carrier based aircraft, one hundred twenty seven based land based aircraft, and sixteen submarines. <laughs> However, the Japanese Navy, they had four fleet carriers. That's one more. Mm. They had two battleships mm. with about six waiting in the wings because they didn't even need to send everybody, everybody at first. Uh, two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, 12 destroyers, two more destroyers chilling, 16 float planes. What the hell is a float plane? Yeah, I'm plane glad you asked. Oh, that just floats? <laughs> okay. That have the buoys underneath it, and I suppose? Buoys. The buoys. <laughs> uh, a float plane. You mean like, it, yeah, I'm sure it's got a flotation. Yeah, device. and it just lands on the water and it takes off and then it drops bombs. Like rescue is down under. And then yeah. they just crash it into things if they... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, there's water. Make it that way. And they had 248 <laughs> carrier-based aircraft. So, and then... Also waiting in the wings, because they had another division just chilling, which we'll get into. Like a villain. Uh, two more light carriers, five battleships, four heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and then 35 random support ships. All right, Japanese. Random support ships. Yes. That seems very broad. So. so <laughs> that's include, fisher boats. Are like, yeah. That's what it says. <laughs> a shrimp boats included in that. Just a, <laughs> well, we'll back the whaling boats. <laughs> yeah, we, whaling. Had a, we had one guy in a, in a Dolphin rowboat. boats. <laughs> Whale wars. <laughs> Ah, uh, now we know the true uh, yes. meaning behind World War II. So, the Japanese the powers <laughs> focus mainly in the whale. <laughs> they were trying they were to actually whales. fighting a war against the whales. We just, we just got, got in the, the way. way. Yeah. <laughs> they were trying to crash those planes into the ocean. It was a like, brutal Harvard misunderstanding. Like, <laughs> yeah. You parked your ships next to whales. There's I'm a sorry. whole school of whales beneath our fleet, and they just were trying to get to them. Yeah, but they were going to take out the whale base. You but. know, Japan wanted to <laughs> conquer the United States, so they have an easier way to get to the English Isle of Whales. <laughs> 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 and it all made sense. That's yeah, why they bomb whales. agreed to be with Hitler. They're like, you can take all of Europe, but leave us whales. <laughs> yeah, whales is ours. <laughs> you give us whales. So, the Japanese operation, like the earlier tech on Pearl Harbor, sought to eliminate the United States as a strategic power in the Pacific, thereby giving Japan a free hand in establishing its greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. Wow. Uh, That's a mouthful. Great band. <laughs> they, they just wanted the whole of Asia to be happy under Japanese Well, they rules. just wanted everything to be Asia. <laughs> and just, well, that's, their, that's like every dictator ever. It's just like, well, if I just control everything, it'll be fine. It'll work. <laughs> so the I Japanese... Swear. I swear. <laughs> and I swear. Trust me. <laughs> the Emperor loved that song. <laughs> I'll be there. So the Japanese hoped another demoralizing defeat would force the U.S. to capitulate to the Pacific War in the Pacific War and thus ensure Japanese dominance in the Pacific. Apparently, these people don't know Americans. No, they don't. <laughs> we don't give up. As people learn. We don't surrender. And this wasn't that long ago. Like I said, America in 1942 was not the America of today. And this probably America helped. of today. You could potentially say the Battle of Midway created modern America. Yeah. Maybe. You know, there'd be a lot of potential. You know, the yeah, souls yeah, of say, men yeah, you know. were forged in the fires <laughs> of the battle. Of men. There was probably a few other things that happened. But you know, uh, the the Josh Hartnett love story, I'm sure, is in this story somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he died in the Doolittle raid, <laughs> which happened before, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because there was a lot of demoralizing. As I, men- uh, I mentioned, Japan was trying to demoralize us, and we were trying to demoralize them. But propaganda we couldn't 
get there exactly at the moment. <laughs> so they were doing a lot there more. There was no demoralizing them. That's why we had to end up dropping nuclear bombs on them. Yes. <laughs> it was kind of hard. Was, they were Very devoted they people. Were, they were a hard nut to crack. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we did. A, there was, there was that guy, guy who actually guy. survived the war for like seventy years and he, still fought it. He fought. He was <laughs> fighting the war seventy years because he was abandoned. He got abandoned by his like his troops or whatever. He and, never got the memo, and he never How got. Did the he memo. eat? You feel yeah. like someone like at a McDonald's. Oh, he scavenged. Been like, well, people threw in uh, newspapers saying the war had ended. He thought they were fake. <laughs> it's all propaganda. <laughs> he thought they were trying to get like trick him out, and they're like, no, dude. Like, it's really over. We're going to trick you out. <laughs> Just shoots him. And he was literally there for like 30 or 40 years. A while. I think. I think he killed like five extra people, too. Yeah, after the war had ended. <laughs> they keep adding numbers to like the final body the count. Final, I'm sure they had to. Had to God damn that guy. Had to amend the list. Yeah, because it's like these World War guys, II, 1939 to like 1985. <laughs> deaths by, from in, military deaths by Imperial Japan. Yeah. <laughs> it just like add those It five. keeps going up. It's like a, actually a ticker. It's like, oh, there goes. Oh, God, he got Post, another one. <laughs> Post imperial deaths. <laughs> but anyway, so Japan <laughs> trying to demoralize us, and they're doing a decent job of it because we as Americans, we can be fickle. So we're like, oh god, dang it, we're blowing up all our stuff. <laughs> Man, our stuff. I don't going. like this. So he I'm shook a, my battleship. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna give up easily, like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. what they wanted to do is to lure American aircraft carriers into a trap. It's a trap. And occupying Midway was part of an overall barrier strategy to extend Japan's defensive perimeter in response to the Doolittle raid on Tokyo. Because they were angry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this operation was also considered purport, uh, preparatory for further attacks against Fiji, Samoa, and Hawaii. Itself. We need water. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take that island because we need water. They were trying to get Hawaii. There was a lot of whales. <laughs> we need that aquifer. The plan was handicapped, however, by faulty Japanese assumptions of the American reaction and poor initial dispositions. We were kind of bummed for a minute. <laughs> but then we're like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> then we got mad. <laughs> Most significantly, American crypt, uh, cryptographers were able to determine the date and location of the planned attack, enabling, enabling the forewarned U.S. Navy to prepare its own ambush. <laughs> four Japanese and three American aircraft carriers participated in the battle. The four Japanese fleet carriers. The Akagi. The Kaga. The Saryu. And Hiryu. Part of the sixth <laughs> carrier force that had attacked Pearl Harbor. So they were back. Do you? <laughs> <They're> back. <laughs> <laughs> Reunion tour. And this time they're pissed off. And all four were sunk. I think the whole time they were pissed the off. The whole time they Do were you know pissed what off. Do you know what those names stand for? No. No. I assume it means for big <laughs> like, wind, shit. fire, earth, water. <laughs> wind! <laughs> Captain Planet! Because yeah. there were six total, but two of them were chilling somewhere else. It's probably like Power Rangers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they ran the ships into each other, and they f formed a For giant the, ship. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense for Japan. I'm yeah, just it saying. does. Sorry, hey, you <laughs> know, the, the roots of anime were here. <laughs> and then the mechs. And at the Battle Emerged of Midway. from the ocean. And then the kaiju. Over <laughs> <laughs> they saw it. They were trying to kill the whales, but they weren't whales. Oh, they we mistranslated. They, they were kaiju. <laughs> yeah, they were kaiju. Yeah, exactly. That's what they were trying to do. It a mistranslation. Sense. Pearl Harbor was a misunderstanding. <laughs> 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 when that first kaiju struck... <laughs> But hasn't happened yet because they've done a good job. So all four of those mentioned carriers were, um, spoiler alert, sunk. Whoops. Lost them. As was the heavy cruiser Mikuma. The U.S. lost the carrier Yorktown. Bummer. And the destroyer Haman. But that's it. <laughs> yeah. After Midway and the exhausting attrition of the Solomon Islands campaign, Japan's capacity to replace its losses in material especially aircraft carriers <laughs> and men, especially whale trained pilots and whale trained. Crewmen, of course, they <laughs> were a whale trained to cope with mounting casualties while the United States massive industrial and training capabilities made losses far easier to replace. The battle of Midway along with Guadalcanal is sometimes considered a turning point in the Pacific war. Whoa. So what actually happened during this fun battle? We've made three turns thus far <laughs> all around Midway. So, after a diversionary attack by a smaller Japanese force on the Aleutian Islands, we're like, we're going to try and trick you. So they were just like, let's start off some the coast shit of over Alaska. Here. Yeah, so Aleutian. Like, I was like, whoa, like, what? Yeah, yeah, no, they're like, what are you uh, doing around uh -huh. there? So it was like in Ocean's Eleven when yeah. the two twins or whatever start fighting and yeah. start distracting <laughs> the security guard. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. So Yamamoto, 
he planned a three-pronged approach toward Midway. First, an air attack on the island launched from four first-line Japanese aircraft car- carriers. Cougars. No, carriers. Cougars. <laughs> Sponsors aircraft carriers. The aforementioned Akagi, Kagu, Hiru, Soryu. We in Earth Fire? No, we don't know what it means. <laughs> you know, rest in peace, carriers. <laughs> the Arigato. <laughs> and they were commanded... <laughs> the Dami and the Arigato. <laughs> they were commanded by Vice Admiral Nagumo. Second, an invasion force of ships and soldiers led by Admiral, Vice Admiral, Kondo. Kondo Combat. <laughs> and finally, once expected, U.S. reinforcements for Pearl Harbor arrived. A joint strike by Naguma's forces and Yamamoto's own fleet, which will be waiting 600 miles to the west. <laughs> you know Very it's complex. <laughs> you know it's a good attack plan when it's three-pronged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These oh, two-pronged yeah. plans are hopeless, and four-pronged is just too it's much. It's outright. <laughs> a four-prong, you're dealing with a fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this to... fork of a plan here. Stick a fork this plan, f- prong plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stick this fork into a light socket. That's your plan. <laughs> There's a lot of water around. Um, Typical of Japanese. I didn't also. But I mean, you think about like a like pitchfork. It's like a three now. Now three's like a three's like a. I think pitchforks could be just any. It's a trident. Number. Is literally three. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, tr- it's a. I mean, and also a three pronged. Who wouldn't want a trident for a plan? Much better than a fork. Yeah, Operation Trident probably has happened. Yeah, I would point. rather <laughs> fight somebody off with a trident rather than a fork. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> the more you know. Do, do, do. Tridents are better than forks. So, Depends. typical of Japanese naval planning during World War II. Typical Japanese war planning. <laughs> trident <laughs> Going like. on. Typical. Yamamoto's. Yeah, they brought tridents. <laughs> Yamamoto's battle plan for taking Minway, named Operation Me. Am I? <laughs> Which must mean something like kill the Americans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, we don't understand language. It's Japanese. It was exceedingly war. complex. Already three pronged. It required the careful and timely coordination of multiple battle groups over hundreds of miles of open sea. You get into too many prongs. Too many well, this prongs. Is what, this three pronged plan, yes, yeah, starting yeah. to turn into a, a mess. <laughs> yeah. So his design was also predicated on optimistic, optimistic intelligence. <laughs> a good band. Suggesting that USS Enterprise and the USS Hornet, two of our good old carriers. Captain by James T. Kirk. And we all know where the Enterprise ended up going. <laughs> Got lost on a five-year mission. <laughs> Forming Task Force 16, because that's what we do in America. That's the name of our things. <laughs> Task Force. They were the only... They thought that they were the only carriers chilling near the area mm-hmm. in the for the Pacific uh, fleet. So optimist. Because... So, rather than preparing for the worst, they were like, let's prepare for the best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they probably don't got more ships. <laughs> They're feeling cocky at this point. Yeah, the because they've been they, kicking they our ass. some wins, you know, just yeah. like kicking our ass. They're all Scores stubborn. 28 to 3 is the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 Only got so much time left. How can we possibly win? <laughs> and they're just like fanatical, not giving up and fighting wars 30 years after Not giving so a they, fuck. So they're just... Living uh, it up in Imperial Japan. <laughs> <laughs> basically. That's basically what happened. Thank you, Limp Bizkit, Thank for you your historic Durst. knowledge. <laughs> uh, Dr. Durst. <laughs> 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 she gave him a history degree. So the reason they thought this is because during the Battle of the Coral Sea one month earlier, the USS Lexington had been sunk. So they were right about that one. <laughs> <laughs> and the USS Yorktown suffered considerable damage such that the Japanese believed she too had been lost. <gasps> However, following hasty repairs at Pearl Harbor, Yorktown Sword Eden would go on to play a critical role in the discovery and eventual destruction of the Japanese fleet hasty. carriers at Midway. Hasty repairs. Yes, quite hasty. <laughs> Lots of duct tape involved. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, much of Yamamoto's planning coinciding with, uh, coinciding with the general feeling among the Japanese leadership at the time was based on the gross misjudgment of American morale, <laughs> <laughs> which was believed to be debilitated from the string of Japanese victories in the preceding months. We morale. don't give up. Oh, we they were wrong. We don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of sad songs written for a few months. However, U.S. Navy crypt- crypto analysts, something I don't say often, <laughs> had begun breaking Japanese communications codes early in 1942. So they knew for a few weeks ahead of time that Japan was planning an attack in the Pacific at a location they called AF. These stupid idiots ain't even trying to hide what they're doing. (laughs) So suspecting it was Midway, the Navy decided to send out a false message from the base claiming it was short of fresh water. Uh, Japan's radio. Yeah. Clever girl. (laughs) Japan's radio operators sent out a similar message about AF soon afterward. Confirming the location of the planned attack. 
Mm. No it's Japanese. Mid, it's midway. No Japanese radio operators who intercepted the message seemed concerned that the Americans were broadcasting uncoded that a major naval installation close to the Japanese threat ring was having a water shortage, <laughs> <laughs> which could have tipped off Japanese intelligence officers that it was a deliberate attempt at deception. <laughs> <laughs> but they were so full of themselves at this point. They're like, yeah. Uh, oh, these stupid Americans. Like I said, this is a broken, real. We've broken their spirit. This is a real Rocky Apollo Creed thing. Another reason that we've chosen the Battle of Midway. It's fun. Because we shouldn't have won. It's like the Giants and the Patriots. And I guess, well, unfortunately. I guess How many metaphors are we going to throw at this thing? Oh, we'll throw some more. <laughs> it's it's David like and David Goliath. and Goliath. For right. instance, the Yorktown, they thought it was out of commission. Rocky they thought, and Bullwinkle. <laughs> Samson and those scissors. <laughs> yeah, Jesus the Christ. Achilles and his heel. <laughs> Jesus and his JFK cross. JFK and a up right grassy knoll. <laughs> oh, Jesus and his cross. <laughs> they said Jesus and his Christ. I was like, Wait. no, I just said Jesus Christ <laughs> in general. Oh, as he was a man that something happened. He was involved. Okay. Yeah. The metaphor we took it for. No, we hit too we far. far. We sunk it <laughs> at midway, <laughs> just like the Yorktown or so they thought <laughs> the metaphor is back. <laughs> so they were dumb. So, yeah. I guess they're just. Meh. I guess they just don't feel like encrypting nothing anymore. I guess they're so desperate for water that they're so, just like, somebody beat- bring us water. <laughs> yeah, we have beaten them down. Yeah, we they, have broken. They the care. Spirit. They care not for the security. So, now is the time to strike. <laughs> now is the time, Admiral. <laughs> Tor, tor, if you tor. have, <laughs> tiger, <laughs> tiger, tiger, tiger. If you have fighters, send them now. So with Japan's fleet so widely dispersed, Yamamoto had to transmit all strategy over the radio. Enabling Navy crypto analysts based in Hawaii to figure out what Japan do well, plan brilliant. to attack. Yeah, so now they know where brilliant. they're going to attack, and now they know when they're going to attack. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> like, Whoops! <laughs> and I hope these guys have to do the. Uh, I mean, good for America. I'm glad. The suicide these, thing. Dumbasses, So luckily, but... with this information, you know, Admiral Nimitz, Commander in Chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, Nimitz could develop a plan to combat the invasion. Fletch too. So Yamamoto felt deception would be required to lure the U.S. fleet into a fatally compromised situation. The deceptors were trying to be deceptive or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to this end, he dispersed his forces so that their full extent, particularly his battleships, would be concealed from the Americans prior to battle. Sneak attack with giant ships. <laughs> Critically, Yamamoto's supporting battleships and cruisers trailed Vice Admiral Nagumo's carrier force by several hundred miles. And boats don't go that fast, folks. Knots. <laughs> they were intended to come up and destroy whatever elements of the U.S. fleet might come to Midway's defense once Nakagumo's carrier had weakened them and completely destroyed them sufficiently for a daylight gun battle. <laughs> 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 this tactic was doctrine in most uh, major navies at the time. You know, but we here at the U.S., we break doctrines. What Yamamoto did not know was that the U.S. had broken uh, parts of the main Japanese naval code, as said, dubbed JN-25, the Americans, divulging many details of the plan. Whoops. His emphasis on dispersal also meant none of his formations were in a position to support the others. <laughs> For instance, despite the fact that Nagumo's carriers were expected to carry out strikes against Midway and bear the brunt of American counterattacks, the only warships in his fleet larger than the screening force of 12 battleships were two Congo-class fast battleships. <laughs> <laughs> Two heavy cruisers and one light cruiser. By contrast, Yamamoto and Kanda had between them two light carriers, five battleships, four heavy cruisers, and two light cruisers, none of which would see action at Midway because they were too far away. <laughs> <laughs> but they got to front row seats to all the destruction. And then, unfortunately, as one of the prongs was coming, the light carriers of the trailing forces and Yamamoto's three battleships weren't able to keep pace with the carriers. And so they just kind of... Got left, left behind. behind. <laughs> your, your prongs are falling apart. And uh, yeah, the distance now, between yeah. Yamamoto and Kondo's forces and Nagumo's carriers had grave implications during the battle. The ina- uh, invaluable reconnaissance capability of the scout planes carried by the Americans and cruisers and carriers, as well as the additional anti-aircraft capabilities of the cruisers and other two battleships of the Congo class and the trailing forces, was denied to Nagumo. So he couldn't do the same thing the Americans were doing because they were just far away from each other. As mentioned earlier, so far the Japanese assumed that the U.S. aircraft carrier Yorktown, which had been damaged during the Battle of Midway, I mean Coral Sea, <laughs> it would also get damaged, spoiler alert, it would be unavailable at Midway. So they thought he was uh, inactive for the week <laughs> at yeah. the Yorktown. Um, but as I said, they fixed it. 
So it showed up. But he comes running on field to everyone's surprise. And, of course, their illustrious captain, Elliot Buckmaster. <laughs> Buckmaster. <laughs> Ta- taking the Yorktown into battle. So after the diversionary attacks happened in Alaska, which we didn't buy, I guess maybe they blew up a few icebergs or whatever's in Alaska. <laughs> We're like, nah. Polar bears. <laughs> the <laughs> crab. <laughs> yeah. What about the crab? The deadliest catch is a kaiju. Alaska. <laughs> Dumb Alaskan asking. crab fishing. That's a dumb plan. Yeah, I know. It was. Because we're like, why? Would, who cares? <laughs> so after the diversionary attack, the Americans... The battle's here. <laughs> unfortunately made also a mistake um, because the group started... The U.S. just started sending B-17 Flying Fortress bombers just oh, around yeah. Midway to attack Kondo's invasion force, which they mistakenly assumed was the main Japanese fleet. It wasn't. So part of the Japanese plan was working. This unsuccessful attack marked the first military engagement in the Battle of Midway. And then everyone just kind of chilled for about the day. But before dawn the next day, more B-17s left midway for a second attack on the Japanese invasion force. Also unsuccessful. <laughs> Not working. Good Meanwhile, job, guys. Nagumo launched the first phase of Japan's attack as planned, sending 108 Japanese warplanes war planes from the four aircraft carriers to strike midway. While the Japanese were able to launch 108 aircraft in just seven minutes, it took the Enterprise and the Hornet over an hour to launch 117. <laughs> So we're slacking. It's not looking good in this movie so far. <laughs> you got to pump them out. You got to pump them out. That's the thing. That's Seven just... minutes to an hour for about the same amount of planes. Yep. So not looking good. <laughs> Goddamn Japanese efficiency. Yep. So the Japanese planes got there and they inflicted severe damage to the U.S. base for about several hours. They just bombed the hell out of it. But the airfield was still usable. And the anti-aircraft defenses were still functioning. So they basically missed all the important stuff. <laughs> and everything was just on fire. It was oh. just a lot of failure running around. So now, yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't looking Everyone's good. failing everyone. The deceptions are falling apart at the seams. The deceivers yeah. are being deceived. Yeah, everyone's sending radio signals that everyone can intercept. It's like, isn't anyone encoding anything anymore? Does anyone code? <laughs> so Bring in the Navajo. A lot of the U.S. commanders seeing that things are not looking good. Because, as you know, so far in the war, we had just lost every battle, (laughs) basically. The commanders judged that the need to throw something at the enemy as soon as possible is greater than the need to coordinate the attack. (laughs) Throw bodies. Throw bodies at it. (laughs) So, they sent aircraft of different types and speeds. (laughs) Fighters, bombers, and torpedo bombers, accordingly. American squadrons were launched piecemeal and proceeded to target in several different groups. It was accepted that the lack of coordination would diminish the impact of the American attacks and increase casualties. But General Spruance calculated that this was worthwhile since keeping the Japanese under aerial attack impaired the ability to launch a counterstrike. While Japanese, their tactics, they preferred to just wait all at the same time. They wouldn't just send people when they were ready. They were like, okay, like we're now, we're all ready. Let's go. (laughs) Hence, they sent all the planes at the same time. And he gambled that he would find Nagumo and his flight decks at their most vulnerable while they're just waiting. <laughs> so, shortly after that, just as his pilots informed Nagumo that another airstrike against the base would be necessary, U.S. just a ragtag group of U.S. fighters launched from Midway began attacking the four Japanese carriers without success. <laughs> Wasn't working. <laughs> Lack of success. As Bound. Nagumo was rearming Japanese planes for a second air attack, however, a Japanese scout plane spotted portions of the U.S. fleet, including the Yorktown. That bastard. <laughs> to the east of Midway, Nagumo switched to ax- tactics, ordering planes that were still armed to prepare to attack the U.S. ships once the rest of the Japanese planes returned from Midway. Still waiting. Just like the song. Meanwhile, a wave of U.S. Devastator torpedo bombers. Mm. They have a job. Now that sounds like a... They could do something. <laughs> from the U.S. This carriers. attack better be successful with the name so, like that. From the U.S. carriers Hornet uh, Enterprise, they arrived to attack the Japanese ships. They were unescorted by fighter planes. Nearly all of them were shot down by Japanese zero <laughs> fighters. <laughs> the only devastation funny. they wrecked was upon themselves. So, about an hour later, as the Japanese chilled, refueled, rearmed their planes, another wave of U.S. carrier launched bomber struck, and they hit every single one of the carriers. Hey, someone's doing something. So were these the torpedo bombers? More torpedo bombers? There were just more torpedo bombers. and They actually got their torpedoes off? And since everything was being refueled, every single ship just caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Only pretty lucky. For instance, another reason it was lucky, two squadrons of Enterprise Air Group split up with the intention of seeking, sending one squadron each to attack the Kaga and the Akagi. 
A, mis- a miscommunication caused both of the squadrons to both dive at the same ship. <laughs> at the Kaga. Recognizing the error, Lieutenant Richard Halsey Best, who was the best, and his two wingmen were able to pull out of the dive. After judging that Kaga was doomed, because finally they were hitting stuff, he said, let's go to this other ship, the Akagi. Coming under an onslaught of bombs for almost two squadron, Kaga sustained four or five hits, which caused heavy damage and started multiple fires because there was fuel lying everywhere. They didn't have their bombs secured because they were just reloading them and they didn't think we were coming in piecemeal fashion. Secure those bombs and clean up that fuel. And then we <laughs> killed the captain of both of the carriers, apparently, with one of the bombs. So now there's no captain. And uh, everything's on fire. Descent into ca- everything's on fire. It descends into chaos. And it, what? It was a matter fine. of like five minutes. One of the bombs landed near the bridge, killing Captain Okada and most of the ship's senior officers. <laughs> Lieutenant Clarence e. Dickinson, part of the group who dropped the bomb, recalled, We were coming down in all directions on the port side of the carrier. I recognized her as the Kaga. She was enormous. <laughs> the target was utterly satisfying. <laughs> Yeah, this is warlike man here. I saw a bomb hit just behind where I was aiming. I saw the deck rippling and curling back in all directions, exposing a great section of the hangar below. I saw my 500-pound bomb hit right abreast of the carrier's island. The 200-pound bomb stuck in the forward area of the parked planes. And then the blaze started because the Japanese strike aircraft, all on top, fuel hoses snaked across the decks. As refueling was being hastily completed, you know, like gasoline fight from uh, Zoolander. <laughs> People just spraying that. So um, rather With than uh, stowing the George magazines. George Michael blaring in the background. <laughs> yeah. So instead of stowing away everything that was important, you know, Japanese carriers were extraordinarily vulnerable. In response, the only carrier left at this point, Hiryu. They launched two waves of attacks on the Yorktown, which had to be abandoned. The Yorktown, because... It was still getting shot up, and they used duct tape and, and started sinking again. <laughs> They're like, oh, crap. And, um, duct tape. But so right before it started to sink, the Yorktown sent off the rest of their planes, and they blew up the Hear You, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> also set ablaze, putting all four Japanese carriers out of commission. <laughs> that's funny. So now the Japanese For the are win. So, uh, so that's all their carriers, right? No, they had six total oh, they had six. in the Navy. Two in the wings. And they had four that's that were right. there, and we blew them all up. And so we lost, uh, you know, the Yorktown. Rest in peace, Yorktown. But that's, you know. And that was basically, even though the battle lasted three days, that was basically the major action was that day. So the rest of the two days, long story short, we just kind of kept sending a few random planes at each other. And by June 6th, Yamamoto ordered his ships to retreat, ending the Battle of Midway. Huh. June 6th. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a day yeah. happened in World War Two. This is two. Uh, so that it's was two nine, of them. 1942. Well, I mean, because the battle started a different yeah. day. So yeah. So it's two years later. Yeah, yeah. D Day. A lot happened in a World War Two. If you if you weren't familiar, especially on June sixth. So we lost a few ships, but in all, Japan had lost as many as three thousand men, including more than two hundred of their most experienced pilots, near, nearly three hundred aircraft, a heavy cruiser, all the aircraft carriers. Why right? the Americans lost the Yorktown and the Hammond. A poor destroyer, <laughs> along with 145 aircraft, but only 360 serv- servicemen, approximately. Only? Yeah. So they lost thousands. Well, yeah, we compared, compared. Yeah, yes, I know. Still loss of life. But so, <laughs> you know, Battle Midway Every was important. Is precious. Some people have called it the turning point of the Pacific. Another turn. It was the Allies' first major naval victory against the Japanese. And not the last, let me tell you. And it was like, this was really important because, like, yeah, they took out so many experienced people. Yeah, and like they didn't have anybody else basically. Well, you got to um, train these people again. You got to train up the young youngins to come play, and they're not going to be nearly as experienced as all the experienced guys who long knows how long those guys have been flying. Yeah, probably years. And, and like years. all the yeah, and like to train so, that. Yeah, now now yeah. you just got a bunch of young pups in here. I mean, we're thinking be nearly, they're hot shit and yeah, getting nearly into mistakes, you know. And if they had won this battle, I mean, we would have had like nowhere to basically operate and we would have had to we'd be speaking japanese right now (laughs) maybe you know and they thought that we would just sue for peace which let's be real that wouldn't have happened (laughs) we would have stayed here until we died ask england and then if they had conquered midway they would have started thinking about invading australia well we think alaska peace and then conquer hawaii we can't have them conquering hawaii so, even though after this happened, the Japanese did try to conquer more territory, it didn't happen. 
Didn't happen. Because we stopped him. Not on our watch. And the U.S. did not move from a state of naval, you know, parity, like from one supremacy to the other, like that day. Oh, yeah. yeah but yeah. it was getting bad for the Japanese after that because we sunk other carriers. Because naval battle had become basically five planes at the other yeah. ship. Yeah. I mean, the big battleships were basically used for just like peppering, you know, landing sites and whatnot. A little bit of berry So, pepper. as a result of the U.S. victory at the Battle of Midway, Japan abandoned its plan to expand its reach in the Pacific and would remain on the defensive for the remainder of World War II. Back the here. battle injected U.S. forces with confidence and drained Japanese morale. Shit. It happened. <laughs> Straight up pure confidence right there. It yeah, turned the tide of war. Yeah. Let me shoot up some confidence right here. And then after sure. that, we basically island hopped and beat everything. That with and Guadalcanal are both kind of mixed together, but that one especially because they couldn't launch anything. I anymore. mean, we destroyed like all their shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, accidentally because they had that that crazy three pronged plan. So if you've learned yeah, anything, it turned into like a six, six prong. Yeah, plan. yeah, and everyone was, was just like, yeah. there were like <laughs> eight, there were like eight <laughs> prongs on that motherfucker. Yeah, so the, that's an eight pronger. <laughs> yeah. So we had you know Americans, the scrappy underdog, just like launching stuff at like you know the Ivan Drago. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't Russia. Make more sense. It's like the Yao Ming of navies. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we're going to try and block the shot, and we did, and we're like Kevin Hart sized. <laughs> Shouldn't have happened. <laughs> it's almost impossible. And you know, as many things throughout history as we point out, you know, you kind know. of luck, a little bit of planning. Then, you know, no, that's just happens. one of those things that makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hole. <laughs> think about it. But yeah, S- some say. We were meant to win. <laughs> yeah, the force was with us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had the Enterprise wait this time. I mean, we know <laughs> the Japanese were just stupid. They were overconfidence. Confidence. I don't know about stupid. Yeah. I guess that's it. All right. You guys have anything to add? Go watch our stuff on YouTube <sighs> and listen to our other podcasts. Go watch Midway, uh, directed by Roland Emmerich, <laughs> where I got all my information from. <laughs> Historically accurate. Uh, so, yeah, our other podcast is at mixcloud.com slash subjective changes so if you are interested in that it's more like movies and shit not this we dare not say a word about history (laughs) yeah sometimes we call back to the wrong things but anyway because we're stupid (laughs) stupid americans we're stupid americans that's right that's we hate everybody that's all i have to add um but michael said he doesn't want any more gangster topics (laughs) hey go vote on twitter (laughs) I want I want to do an entire series on, <laughs> on gangsters. I mean, we had to have like a little like you know underdog battle, a little underdog you know, in between battle. all the gangsters. It's like listen to historical. We talk about gangsters in World War Two. Well, I mean, I just was and tea. I was just meaning like you know talking about some famous things. But oh, anyway, whatever. That's the end. It. Get out of here. We'll figure it out. Bye. <laughs> Good evening. Konnichiwa. <laughs>